So what we're going to look at right now is we're going to look at uh, these things called transformations in R2. And, and one of the reasons why we look at transformations on R2 is to help us to think geometrically about what's happening with a linear transformation. And so um, that's what I'm going to do here inside of this entire le lesson or section. So we're going to start out with this uh, linear transformation. It's going to go from R2 to R2. So its domain is R2 and its codomain is R2 as well. And it's going to be defined as T of X1, X2 is equal to X1 plus 2X2 and 3X1. So what I want to do first, right, before I do anything, is I'm going to define what happens to that transformation on um, the standard basis. So I'm going to start out with t of 0, 1, or t of 1, 0, excuse me, t of 1, 0, and that's going to end up equaling 1, 3. And then I'll take t of 0, 1, okay, plug it into my transformation, and that's going to end up equaling 2, 0, okay? Now, I'm going to draw these guys. Okay. So I'm going to write t of 1, 0, okay, in red. So it's going to go from 1, 0, that's my original vector, and that's going to become 1, 3. So it's going to become this vector now. Okay? And then I'm going to use blue to generate my second vector, blue. Okay? And so that's, it goes from 0, 1, okay, to 2, 0. Okay, now if I imagine, right, that I draw a box utilizing these vectors, right, tip to tail, then I can see what happens to uh, the standard basis, right, under this transformation. I can even maybe even characterize it, okay? So what happens here, this thing that's occurring right here is called a shear, all right? And so what happened with the shear is, is essentially that um, we kind of slanted our, or actually, I guess it slants this way, okay? We slanted um, our box, right? And then I actually also have a stretch. So there's a stretch of the box two by two, okay? So we, along the, um, the x-axis, right? So we stretched out that, well, on the x-axis, we stretched it by two, and then we kind of what's called shearing it. We sheared, uh, sheared this, um, this set, all right? And what I know, too, is that I can rewrite this matrix, okay, as the matrix 1, 3, 2, 0. This one being T of E1, and this being T of E2, okay? So what I can also state is that A... Okay, the matrix A transforms the unit box from the unit box into something that is sheared and then stretched by two. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a way to characterize um, what's happening to a matrix based upon a certain set of um, what we'll call them, um, you know, canonical transformations. Okay, uh, there'll be four of them for us. We'll have reflections, we'll have stretching, we'll have shearing. And then we're going to have something called a, a, a transpose, a transposition, okay? So why don't we take a look at those, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if we have a special case of an invertible matrix, okay? So let's characterize um, this use. for First, we're going to say, okay, so the use of the standard basis for R2, 1, 0, and 0, 1, and it generates a unit box, and that's going to allow us to characterize special transformations associated with their associated matrices, uh, along with their associated matrices. So we're gonna have one, reflection, two, stretching, three, shearing, and four, transposing. The first is a reflection, and it's a reflection over the y-axis. So we have A equals negative one, zero, one. So what's gonna happen there, okay? And let's just, uh, let me write it in, I'm gonna write it in red, okay? So you can see, is we're going to flip, right, the unit box. So nothing's gonna to happen to the unit box except we're gonna flip it over the y-axis, all right? And that's because we've got that negative one inside of that x value. Okay. Next, I've got a reflection over the, over the x-axis. And now we're changing up all our y's. We're making all of our y's now negative. So that's going to flip over the y-axis. Right? So it's going to take our unit box from being on top to being on the bottom. Okay. Whereas the reflection over the y-axis takes it from being on the right-hand side to being on the left-hand side. 
or vice versa, left hand side to right hand side. Next up we have a stretch. And so what's going to happen with a stretch, if we have a stretch in the x direction, we're going to increase all of our x values by a factor of k. Okay. And so in this case, let's take an example and we'll stretch it out by three. Okay. So now along my x axis, right, my length is three times as long. Nothing's happened to y. Okay. Y has remained exactly the same. I've just stretched out all of my x values. Okay. And stretched out all my x values. On the other hand, if I look here at stretching in the y direction, I'm going to keep all my x values the same and I'm going to stretch in the y direction. So let's take this example where what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply all of our y values by 2. So we're going to stretch in the y direction by 2. Okay. And there that is. So now it's twice as tall, right? In the first case, it was three times as long. Now, under stretching in the y direction, it's twice as tall. So now what we're talking about is we're going to talk about shearing. Now, shearing is where our matrix slants one way or another, or, you know, sometimes might even like, you know, pull, skew downwards. Okay. And so we're going to define that in two different ways, right? We're going to define that one shearing parallel to the X axis. That is, is when it shears, right? Okay. When it starts to lean one way or another, but the ground stays the same or a shearing parallel to the Y axis where we kind of pull down or pull up one of the sides. Okay, so I'm going to start out with shearing parallel to the x-axis. Okay, and let's say, for example, I've got, uh, and that's going to be characterized by this matrix, A equals 1, K, 0, 1. So let's take, for example, 1, negative 2, 0, 1. All right, so the vector parallel to the x-axis, or the one on the x-axis, is not going to change at all. It's the other one that's actually going to change. It's now going to become negative 2, okay, negative 2, 1. So our previous one is going to now become negative 2, 1. And this kind of shows us what's happened, okay. We've sheared. the entirety of the unit box. Okay. Or, and notice that we stay parallel to the x-axis when we're shearing parallel to the x-axis, right? So that's why it looks like, you know, it's just leaned one way or another, all right? Now, Let's go ahead and shear, to, shear parallel to the y-axis. In this case, we're going to have uh, matrices of the form A equals 1, 0, K, 1. And so let's take the example of 1, 0, negative 2, 1. All right, so now we're going to stay parallel to the y-axis. So nothing's going to change along the y-axis. So our first standard basis vector, the one for uh, 1, 0, is going to go down to 1, negative 2. Okay, so that's 1, negative 2. All right. And then 0, 1 stays 0, 1. Okay, so now that's the change in our basis vectors. There we are. Okay, and that is the sharing parallel of the y axis. So the one that's a little bit trickier is this idea of the transposition. Okay, so in the transposition, um, from the standpoint of, well, basically from the standpoint of like the unit box, nothing really looks different, but, but there's a switch. There's a switch in terms of the standard basis vectors. Okay. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to have, there's our standard basis vector zero one, that standard basis vector is now going to become, I mean, excuse me, one zero. Now it's becoming zero one. And if I take blue for the other vector, okay. Now, 0, 1 has become 1, 0. And there we go. So what's ended up happening is basically we've just flipped 
right? We flipped our standard basis vectors. We, we flipped their order inside of the matrix, okay? So from the perspective of R2, nothing's changed. Nothing has actually changed inside of R2, okay? What's happened is essentially that we've, uh, yeah, we basically flipped the order. Um, well, you know what? Actually, uh, what has changed is, is that every vector that was 1, 2 is now 2, 1, right? 1, 0 becomes 0, 1. 0, 1 becomes 1, 0, right? Everything's switched along those lines, but there's no change in terms of the overall geometry of R2, okay? Like I said, the only thing that's actually changed is basically where we put every vector, right? They've all kind of flipped their x's and y's. Now what I can do is I'm gonna use this information now to visualize a matrix of the transformation as a series of progressive transformations, right? Rather than thinking of like, I'm gonna do everything all at once, I'm gonna do some very basic uh, transformations one at a time, right? I might do a reflection and then a shear and then a stretch and then a transposition, or I might do a transposition and a shear or a couple of shears, okay? To make a change, all right, overall to the space of R2. Okay, now if A is invertible, we know that we can write A as a product of linear uh, elementary matrices. And the thing is, the cool thing is, is that then we can characterize each elementary matrix. If you noticed, each elementary matrix is going to be characterized as one of these elementary transformations. Okay, so a reflection, all right, is just multiplication by a negative one, either to row one or row two. Uh, a shearing is an addition matrix right, either A12K, okay, or A21K, right? Um, actually, let's go to our notes. A stretch is then, and the next direction is M1 times K, and in the Y direction would be M2 times K, and then a transposition is just the permutation matrix, okay? So, let's take a look at an example of this. So let's take A for example, and A is 2, 1, negative 2, 3, and we want to transform A into a series of elementary matrices. So we're going to end up with A equal to A12, negative 1, times M2, times 4, times A21, times 1, A211, times M12, okay? So this is what it is as a series of elementary matrices. And this will transform a vector by first stretching the x values by 2, okay? That's this one right here. Then, shearing parallel to x by 1. Then, stretching uh, by y, your y's by 4. And then, shearing parallel to y by negative 1. Okay? And so, consequently, that's how we're going to go out and transform R2. We're going to do that by actually generating something in, on the unit box. So, we'll begin with the unit box. Okay? Right? So there's, there's that. Then we're going to take M12, and so that's going to stretch all of our x values by 2. M12. But it's going to leave all of our, our y's the same. Then we're going to shear. Okay, we're going to shear um, parallel to the y-axis, okay? And so, consequently, our value along the x-axis is going to become, we'll stay the same on the x-axis. Let me change this up to red, so that's apparent. We'll stay the same on the x-axis, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to become... 1, 1, our second standard basis vector is now going to become 1, 1. Okay, so that's our new, sh our new shear parallel to the x-axis. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each one of the, we're going to multiply our y's by 4. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, along the x-axis, and then we're going to become 1, 4. All right, so 1, 2, 4. Four, six, eight. There we go. So 
So that stretches out all of our y values by 4. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shear along the uh, parallel to the y axis, right, by negative 1. And that's going to give me first 2, negative 2. Okay, and then 1, 3, and that's our transformation. So this linear transformation, the one that we've characterized as A, what it does first, okay, is it multiplies all of our x values by 2. Okay, then it shears parallel to the x-axis, right, basically slants it over by 1 in the, y direct, in the x direction. Okay, then we stretch out all of our y values, okay, by 4. And then finally, we're going to shear in the uh, parallel of the y. Okay. Now, it, I know it doesn't look like it's sheared parallel to y, but it actually is. And the reason why it is, we know that it actually is, is because previously we sheared parallel to x. So now we've got a shear parallel to x and a shear parallel to y. So that kind of makes it not parallel to y any longer. Okay. And there it is. So what we've got here is we've kind of got a way of characterizing the geometry on R2, okay, utilizing these elementary matrices. So let's recap. So first, we can conceive of a linear transformation as making sp changes to a space of R2 graphically. Then we visualize these changes uh, to the standard basis, aka the unit box, right? And three, an invertible matrix then can be written as a product of elementary matrices, and so the transformation can be characterized as shears, reflections, stretches, and transpositions all composed with one another, all right? And that's basically, this is kind of like your mini lesson for transformations on R2.